This is the house where grandmother lives. This is the hill by grandmother's house. This is the family that's off to have fun on the hill by grandmother's house. And this is the wagon that's taking them there. Beautiful country. A beautiful wagon. They travel in the relaxing quiet of Chevrolet's ride. A ride as gentle and soft as new fallen snow. So smooth and quiet, you hardly know you're moving till you look out the window. The fun is in the going, when the going's in a Chevy wagon. Take a look at all five Chevy wagons tomorrow at your Chevrolet dealer. In 2015, I bought this. I had a 68 Impala wagon. I'm a wagon person. Um, that's all we drive with this. I've got a, a daily driver Magnum. My wife's got a Jetta wagon. I love wagons. We love wagons. Um, so I had a 68 Impala wagon before this. Super original, 327 numbers matching, factory build sheet, purchase order from the dealership, everything. I loved it. Um, low miles. Love hate. I love driving it. I hated putting miles on it just because it was so original and so low miles. Um, Sold that, and so I was on the hunt. 5960 is kind of like my my passion, what I really wanted to get to. So searched Craigslist, um, searched Tempest, all these different things. Found a couple, found one out in um, South Carolina. It was really nice. Um, talked to a local shop to go look at it, and then the, the person that was selling it ended up selling it from out underneath me. He's like, well, you're kind of screwing around. I'm just going to sell it. I said... Okay, so I was kind of back to square one, finding them pretty rough. Um, the patina that a lot of these cars have, and they mistake patina for rot, you know. Um, so I found this one out in uh, Idaho and looked at the pictures. And if you know, Idaho is a little bit of a haul from Iowa. I can't just drive in my, you know, hop my car and drive down the street and look at it. Um, called the guy, talked to him, and he was truthful ish to a, to a certain extent. Um, he said, yeah, the, uh, the floor pans have been replaced, um, probably have to replace them again. And he didn't really, that's about the extent of it. Um, so um, we negotiated on a price. I got it for like 67.50, I think 67.50. And then I found a shipper, um, Hoosier Transport out of um, Ohio. And they got it shipped here for about 800 bucks. Um, so the, the transporter, he went to go start it to get it off the, off the truck and it wouldn't start. Um, so we had to jump the starter, got it going, and so we rolled it off, and I put it in gear, put the, turned the lights on. I had no dash lights, but I at least had the headlights, so the, the four or five mile drive, I was okay. Um, speedometer didn't work at that time, so I just kind of ished it. Um, got it home, and then finally I just went to bed. I was, I was tired. And so the next morning I started going through it and looking at it, and the floor pans were, were rotted through on the front. And then he said that they'd have to sheet a piece of metal and just sheet metal screwed it over the rot. They didn't even cut it out or anything. I was like, ah, shoot. So started going through all this, evaluating all this. Um, at that time, I'm I'm not a mechanic. I'm, I'm an, I know enough to be dangerous, but I'm not a mechanic. Um, there's a local guy in town here, uh, Dave Weeks. He had a shop, and so I went to him and and uh, tried to get this done. And he couldn't do it all, so I found another shop in town. Um, and they said they could do it. They were pretty cocky. They could get it done in a couple days. I had bad rotational sound in the rear um, differential, and so I just wasn't sure. I had bought everything as far as disc brakes for the front and then new springs all the way around just to replace it. Um, so got those, um, got that all done, and that, that couple days to get it done turned into a week, and then they called me when it's done, and it was about $3,900. And that was my budget for the car and so I was gone and after that I vowed you know what if I don't know it I'm gonna learn I've got car friends we've got they can help me do this um, instead of just going to the shop so I'm learning as I go and what I don't know I've got auto or tech support so um, brought it home and we started cutting and welding in the floor pans for paste all the front front and rear floor pans and then um, my buddy has got a upholstery shop and so we took it over there because the inside was it was all gone shot so we got new uh, new interior kit from Ciadella interiors out of um, Arizona great job everybody recommends them um, 
and so we got that we got that all put together um, I put it in different gauges and then it's just kind of been a, a little bit at a time as I as I get a little bit of money I'll do something else and then I got a little bit of money and then I put disc, rear disc brakes on and I got a little bit more money and then I put air ride on and so you know it's been evolution of I think it's worth four years since I bought this uh, I put 10,000 miles on it in the four years and it's been worry free hassle free trouble free the only problem I had was when I first got it my gas gauge didn't work so I ished it and I was like all right let's fill it up and I was figuring it's a 20 gallon tank and you know I've got say 10 miles a gallon I got 200 miles well the, the gas tank on these are different than a normal one as far as the, the gas tank is a horseshoe around your spare well in the rear <laughs> and it's 17 gallons not 20 so I was off and I ran out of gas here in Ames um, on a Father's Day and so my, my, my wife and kids ran up and, and got gas for me and other than that I haven't been stranded um, last year I got I was accepted to the Minnesota concourse um, it was the year of the station wagon so it's kind of cool going up in there I mean it's, it's a nice car but it's not like to that level to those yeah. people it's just cool to be part of that whole experience there so um, you know last year we when I bought it, it had a 305 305 out of like a G body 80s car. Um, 180 horse at best. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it. it, it I have a G body. At okay. All, and it, yeah, I have the high output 180 horse. Yeah, it's high. Yeah, yeah, HO. And so, you know, down the interstate, it likes 62. It doesn't like 65 or more. And so I'm driving. I'm like, yeah. go around, go around. And people are pulling up real slow and just like give me a thumbs up. I'm like, Good, thanks, but you can go around. I'm sorry, I'm so slow. Um, With a power glide, it's like you're starting off in second gear anyway. Yep. So. Um, Last year, my uh, my dad's got a, a couple of trucks out, out in the grove at their farm, and he had one that had a, a rebuild 50 in it, and it had about 8,000 miles on the rebuild. And he's like, "Well, if you want, you can you can just have that." And I was like, "Okay, I'll take it. I'll take that." So I got that, and then I found a, a 700 R4 core, and then my buddy has a transmission shop on the side that he's an engineer, and he got that rebuilt for me. So we put it in the new 350 700 R4 last year. And it is complete night and day difference. You know, on the Interstate 80, yep. just yeah. smooth. 700 R4s have a, kind of that granny first gear anyway to help get yep. going a little bit better. Yeah, you go from a power glide to that, it's like you've got two more gears. Yep, so. yep, so, and it's it's a great car. It gets me around, the kids like it. I mean, we, we go everywhere. I usually, my uh, my youngest is, is, she likes cars. And so she goes with me to shows or roll-ins and stuff like that, and, and it's, it's a fun car. Two people are worried about like the outside of their car. Oh, don't touch it. And for yeah. kids walking by, I'm like, it's okay. Come on over here. Open the door and like have a seat. You can play, you know, let them play with the manual paddles on the air ride and stuff like that. Because, I mean, it's stuff like that for little kids that, you know, that could start their, their car hobby, exactly. their, I mean, their car gotta, passion. You got to kind of hook them when they're young. So. Yep. Well, yeah, you talked about the engine stuff. Can we pop, a, pop the hood and just yeah. take a look under there? And, so. so you know, it's a it's just a stock rebuild, and then we pulled off the valve covers and put a, an Edelbrock intake my dad had on the shelf. Um, said thanks, I'll I'll take that, and I just kind of I did the valve covers and the air cleaner, and it was almost the same colored red as what I had, so to kind of tie it all together, I just painted the the motor black because I didn't want to do the GM orange because then. I mean, I want a car to flow. The, yeah. A car's got to flow. I've seen a couple of wagons that um, they don't flow. It's it's proportioned wrong. It's big as far as the tires are the size of something that should be on a, on a truck. And then they've got, you know, nine, nine way air ride, leather seats, all this. And it's just, it doesn't flow. And that's the thing. I was trying to get everything to flow that I was going to do a, a red interior but there's so many different shades and hues and tints to a red that I just did a complimentary black and red or black and silver and gray that um, unless you're a uh, aficionado or a rain man of car interiors you don't notice that the insert for that car or for this seat is a 59 insert this is what they would have in 59 not 60. Um, I just didn't like that that paisley for the 60 insert that the company builds it all in-house so it, didn't, it wasn't any different to just swap that in, that uh, insert out so I like that a little bit better and then it just it just kind of flows together. I love that you have the kid seat still in it. Yeah well it's, I mean every week we're like I gotta go get groceries I'm like all right come on hop in so I mean I just it put the family wagon. It is I put the, the uh, three points in just for our, my smaller one. The lap belts, it goes along the back and buckles in, but it was right in the middle of her back. And she, dad, ah, it, it hurts. And so I was like, well, let's do three points. So I looked for the three points, found them, and then I installed them that 
they're not they're not pull out and ratchet back in, but they'll lock into place if you if you get rocked forward. Yeah. So um, I feel um, function over fashion on a lot of this stuff for this car. Um, I say that, and then I have air ride on, you know. <laughs> and I'm you know I'd like to upgrade it and get bigger lines and valves and and, and stuff like that. And we're getting there, so we'll get to that eventually. But to do the tanks and all that. So I ended up concealing, I was going to put my tanks in the back, in my pump, but again, I've got little kids, so if they're crawling around, I don't want them to snag an airline or something, and I'm just like, we need to kind of clean this up. So I'm not going to have a spare tire, because I've got 18s in the front and 20s in the back, so what do I have for a spare tire? I mean, there's always going to be one that's not right. Yeah. So with that, I just concealed the air ride in here. So they came with a 7-gallon tank, and it was too big. And I had just cut the tabs off the, the mounting plates, and I ended up just um, cutting out holes on the, that come out the sides of the the air right, or the uh, spare tire area here. So I've got lines out here and here, and it just kind of it, it holds it in place, but it kind of wiggles a little bit. So um, next thing I would like to do is add an extra compressor so it's it's faster refilling the tank. Um, but then I'd like to I'd like to scale it down to a five instead of the seven gallon because the five's got more ports and it fits a little bit better that I can actually get both compressors in there with that tank. Still so, clean in there. Yeah, it is. I mean, when I put it all in, when that pump kicks on, it's a little noisy. So I had leftover fat mat from like we fat matted the floor and the roof and everything. So I had enough of that leftover that I just kind of did some sound deadening and we had some my buddy has some 3m leftover rolls of the just the the silencer strips <clears throat> we just run that along the top kind of feeling the noise yep yep so it's not too bad i mean it's a little bit but i think if we get that second compressor it runs a lot faster so it doesn't run as i mean cool. it doesn't take three minutes to air up rather than just the minute and a half or the minute to get it done so um so we'll see where it goes from there but the nice thing is like my, my other buddy that, you know, we had a video on your, your page before that he's got the, the Ford wagon and he's got the dual gate and I've just got the single gate. But then I've got like the, just the single crank on the window and I just crank it up. Yeah, and I actually found Ford ads that, you know, that was a selling point for Ford wagons over Chevy wagons in 69. Yeah. They were talking about the dual purpose gate. Yeah. This is the competition. And that is pretty cool. I like yeah. those dual gates. My, uh, the, the wagon I had before this was a 68 and it had the electric switch under the dash mm -hmm. for the factory electric window roll down. But yeah, a little bit by a little bit we'll get it done up. And like I said, it's, everybody's like, are you done with it? I'm like, it's always done-ish. Yeah. There's always going to be something that you, you want to do or you need to do. You're, you're never um, done if you drive them all the time. No. The only cars that are done are the ones that go to shows and get on and off a trailer and maybe get a mile on them a year from just driving yep. from the trailer to where they're parked. Yep, exactly. So, and it was yeah, kind of that, cool. That's not what this show is about. This is about people that build them and drive them. You know? Yeah. And it's, it's got chips and scratches in it. You know, I, the the paint is the way I got it. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it shows on the on the vid, on the uh, camera, but you can kind of see like there's some runs in the clear here yeah, in that and there. Some, yeah, you got the you got the the holograph scratches in it. Yep. Stuff from road use, and that's just that's the way it is. Yeah. So, but I mean, all the trim is good. It's in. It's all there when I got it. Yeah. Um, when I got it, the uh, Parkwood emblem on the passenger side was missing, and the guy's like, "Oh, it should be there," and it popped the. It was in the glove box. So. Okay. So that was good. Um, so tires and rims, what do you got on these for? Because uh, I mean, people sometimes ask. Yep. So I, I did. I say do do a uh, function over fashion, but the first thing I did was get the new tires and wheels, and the, and so the the tires or the wheels are just Riddlers. Um, I that's I found them on Four Wheel Online, the number Four Wheel Online. That was the website that had the best price and free shipping. Um, They've, they've been a good good wheel. I mean, they're durable. They've got a new model um, through Riddler that I really like that, but you know, there's nothing wrong with these. No. Uh, tires are, are nittos. And then through like through Facebook, there's been a lot of people like, oh, is it tire recommendations for a 60. And I just let them know, you know, they're 18, and 18 by eights in the front and then 20 by tens on the back and then the size of the tires and the, and the backspacing of the wheels and that. So, um, cause for the longest time before I settled on these tires and wheels, I would just look on Craigslist for Parkwoods, try and find somebody with a Parkwood and then see what they have for tires and wheels. If they're 1820s, then I would be like, hey, what size are your tires and wheels, you know? And they would let me know, so I was just kind of making sure. Because you go to buy these online, if they don't fit, 
well, you're kind of at the mercy. Do I send them back for, you know, maybe half my money back, or is exactly. it unrefund? Once they're mounted and balanced, is there no refund, no no de returns? Mm -hmm. So, um, but I've had 10,000 miles on the tires, and they've they've done well. So, I think we're good. He up, obviously upgraded the brakes on this. Yep. So, so um, you said you got disc front and back, and of course with that comes the much safer post 1967. <laughs> yeah. Master cylinder. Yep. That's one thing I always, when I, someone pops a hood on anything that's pre-67, I see that single master cylinder in there. I'm like, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> the, the brake locks and the, so. Well, or if you, you bust a line on a single one, you got no brakes, no fronts, no backs. It's just, yep. Reach for that emergency brake. Yeah. Um, it works. So the, there's a, a company out of uh, Minnesota, Auto City Classics. They're on the north side of the cities and they do gas tanks, brakes, windshields, glass. Um, when we were doing this, the first time when we were putting, when my buddy was putting the trim back in, he put in a screw that was too long and cracked it all the way along the windshield. Um, I started pricing windshields and Auto City Classics in Minnesota was only $299 for a front windshield. It was $160 to ship it here. Yeah. And I was like, God, that's, yeah. You can drive so, up there and get it for that. So my, my wife, God bless her diesel Jetta wagon. Yep. Uh, I woke up 4.30 one morning, fueled it up all the way, and I cannonballed it all the way up there until I got there about 9 o'clock, and I paid for it, and I said, hey, how can you guys sell this windshield so cheap? Because everywhere I looked, I went to the plate, glass place in Ames, they're like five ninety nine for these windshields. And like, well, when you go over to the warehouse and pick up, it, you'll understand that they keep their glass by the, they buy it by the fifty pack. Yeah. So that's how they buy it in bulk, so they can get it so cheap. So. Economy of scale. Yep. So I tell people, anybody's asking, you know, I just pass the word along that you know Auto City Classics. Um, so I bought that that disc brake kit from them as well. So that disc brake kit and the spindle drop, um, it's. It's not a CPP, it's not a Brembo, but it gets the job done and it's a lot cheaper. It's better um, than drums. Yeah, again, like I said, I've had this for four years and 10,000 miles, we haven't had any issues with it. So I'm, I'm really happy with the company and, and the products that they sell, so. So I see the exhaust. What do you have on it for exhaust? Cause it's not peeking out in its normal place. No, no. So so um, I just went with a little uh, set of shorty headers and then I just, I'm, I like thrush. Um, if you can tell the, uh, by my head, my, Woodpecker my woodpecker power. powered my thrush yeah. exhaust. And there's only other one company that uses a woodpecker. Yep. It? So the company. Um, I just went with the dual chamber, and and we did a side side exhaust exit there. So um, we my uh, my buddy's got an exhaust shop, and so I went over there. We bended it and put it up. And this was before I even thought about air ride. And now with air ride, there's been too many times that it's all it's aired down to where it is. And it, I've got in here a couple times and I end up just sticking my foot in the exhaust because it's right at that light, at that size, that my foot goes right in there. Um, the exhaust comes about inch and a half off the ground. So the way it is now is I, I never ride like this. I never drive like this. It sits like this and that's about it. So just as the license plate states, we piled in and took the old family truckster for a spin around Ames, Iowa. The old Parkwood is a nice ride. That 350 engine swap certainly helped the old heavy Chevy get out of its own way. I can only imagine how slow the old gal was with that anemic 305 under the hood. The air ride suspension is well executed and soaked up the bumps as we rolled around town. As can be expected, a 1960 wagon stands out in a sea of modern crossovers, sedans, and SUVs, and more than one of our fellow motorists gave us a wave or thumbs up in approval. I love this old wagon because like our last featured car, it gets used as a family vehicle. It is still fulfilling its purpose 59 years after coming off the assembly line. Upgraded for sure, but still rolling down the road for the same reason as when Ike was in the White House. Externally, it shows some minor and honest wear, a couple swirl marks, a couple chips, and some dead bugs. But we like that at the Average Joe Hot Rod Show. It demonstrates that a car is being enjoyed. Trailer queens are great for showing off skill and talent, but drivers are where my heart truly lies. Derek has done a great job here. He adopted a wagon that was in need of saving and got her standing tall again, all while learning some truly valuable skills along the way. That's a great story, and that's the kind of story I love to tell. Oh, and while we were riding around, Derek dropped a shout out to Quick Performance for helping him out with the differential. So just like the other companies, here's your little free positive review. Well, that about wraps up this episode. If you enjoyed it, please give us a like and share it with your friends. Also, feel free to hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you never miss a new video when it drops. You can also find links to our other social media, merchandise, and crowdfunding efforts in the description below. Thank you for watching, 
I hope you kick butt, take names, but most importantly, kill with kindness. We'll see you next time. Oh, yeah!